Start the show! Okay, so, we <laughs> so we had this sort of amazing thing going. People actually did buy the units upstairs. They were kind of nutty, but that's the way it started out. And then a little bit later, we got the coffee shop. But the problem was, I came in the, I came in the mayor about this time. And uh, the problem down in Greenville was, people started talking about we got this great downtown. Well, downtown Greenville, honest to goodness now, was the Hyatt and one block around the Hyatt. So if you told friends we're going to go downtown, you went to the Hyatt, right? There was nothing else. There was absolutely no West End, no anything down that way. So our challenge was, now this is just two blocks. That's not a real city. How do you get the development to come down the street? How do you get that mixed use and everything to come down the street? Well, the great opportunity was the Poinsett Hotel. Poinsett Hotel built 1924, Grand Hotel. It'd been a vacant and abandoned for 20 years. It was boarded up. It's amazing that it stood there and walked by. People just walked by. People out of town would walk by and go, what is that? People, locals just walked by. No, it's, been, it's been abandoned. Nobody thought it would ever come back. Uh, my city manager, this guy kind of runs the data operations at that time. He wouldn't be manager for long, by the way. He didn't want to adopt him when I became mayor. Uh, he told me, this hotel will never come back. It's, it's too expensive to redevelop that. It'll have to be torn down. Or, I said, Mr. Mayor, I've got a plan I've been working on for two years. We're going to put Greenville Technical College on the top floors and a quality inn motel on the top three, the bottom three floors. Woo! And that was his vision of the Poinsett Hotel coming back. I didn't like that idea. But surely we could find somebody who could do this. And the amazing thing is the miracle happened. A guy from Charleston who had renovated the Francis Marion Hotel, which is built by the same architect in 1924, the same architect who would do the point set. He shows up in Greenville and says, I can do this hotel because I've just done the one in Charleston and it's almost like a twin. I know where the HVA is, I know where the boilers are, I've, I've solved a lot of the problems so it won't cost me as much. And that's exactly what happened. So Mr. Steve Dopp, D-O-P-P of Charleston, still is, but still a good friend of mine, uh, made it happen. So Steve was working on the points at a tail, and at this time, he'd be back and forth to Greenville all the time. His um, hotel, uh, for the most part, had, if you go inside, it had pigeons. Uh, everything inside was devastated. The, the, the ceilings were all a mess and everything else. It was a scary little place, but it was really interesting that Steve was always proud of the fact that while he'd come up on the business trips to do the financing, that he had the key, which I always thought was funny, that points at a tail, this huge building, all abandoned, boarded up. There was a key, <laughs> he put it in, he could go inside. And he took me in there one time, it was dark, quite creepy, we had a flashlight, walked looking around, really, real mess in there. Well, one day we had a meeting that was going on a real long time with some bankers, and Steve said, I gotta get out of here, I'm kinda tired. It was like three o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon, he said, I'm gonna go over the hotel. And I remember telling Steve, I said, I think you should go in there by yourself. He said, it's okay, I do it all the time, just kinda, Sort of fun to do. So the next guy get out of here. So he got the key on a Tuesday afternoon and he went over to the points of the hotel. And uh, <laughs> very dark and scary. And for some reason, I can't imagine why, uh, he went up to like the third or fourth floor. Not, not really a smart idea. And he said he just kind of got curious about things and he was walking through the hallways, all abandoned and all open doors, but there were no doors in those days. And he heard a noise in one of the rooms. He was on the third or fourth floor. And he walked inside and he said on a blanket on the ground was this woman dressed in real short pants, he said. Oh, no. And he walked up the room and startled her and, and looked at her and said, uh, and Steve's from Charleston, very genteel. He said, uh, uh, ma'am, you really ought not to be in here by yourself. And she said to him, Oh, I'm not by myself. <laughs> <laughs> he turned around there. There was some friends back there. <laughs> so, uh, Steve came back and the host, came back to our business being turned completely white and everything. He said he would never never do that again. <laughs> Brad, I thought you said that you renovated. It's just one corner that has clean wood on the floor. Yeah, I just did that part. <laughs> <laughs> start with a corner though. You gotta start and then people will come and everything else will come into place. <laughs> <laughs> so far I just got farm animals coming. <laughs> <laughs> I left the door open. I was like, anyone can come in and help, you know, paint and move out. Just a bunch of sheep so far. <laughs> <laughs> You've been here for 
for six months, right? <coughs> I think you should learn to close the door and, and maybe guard yourself from the sheep. And, and for God's sake. What's the sheep going to do to me? What's the sheep going to do to me? What's the sheep going to do? How dare you? <laughs> Don't you remember what sheep can do? Don't you remember Spartanburg? <laughs> Creepy even when you finish it. <laughs> 